Now I have the pleasure of introducing um, a person who uh, has been a tremendous ally uh, to the gender community for as long as I know, and a uh, personal friend of mine who has uh, been responsible for saving many lives, I'm sure. I'd like to introduce Dr. David Nyland. Uh, Dr. David Nyland is the clinical director of the Gender Health Center. Uh, he's also a professor at uh, California State University, Sacramento, and an author, Dr. Nyland. Thank you, Dr. Malazzo, and thanks again for inviting me to speak. I feel honored. So I decided to, as a ally or a cisgender person, and for people who aren't familiar with that term, I imagine many of you are, is cis, C-I-S, gender. It's a, a term that was coined to mark people who are not transgender, somebody whose gender identity assigned at birth is, matches up with their gender identity. Uh, it's a way of marking that cisgender is just one gender, it's no better, et cetera. So, so this is the, uh, the story of what happened to me um, a recent Thursday, and it's titled, A Day in the Life of a White, Able-Bodied, Cisgender Male. So the day begins by waking up at 5 a.m. I almost hit the snooze button, but I have to get up. If I don't work out now, I won't do it later. So I drag my ass to 24 Hour Fitness. I check in at the front desk. The front desk person does not ask me my, what my real name is or my birth name, often the case with transgender persons. I then hail, uh, head to the male locker room. There's only two choices, so I pick male. There is a locker available, cool. I take off my clothes to dress in my workout attire. I worry about getting through the spin class. Some of you may know about a spin class, it's tough. But one thing I don't worry about as a cisgender person is getting stared at or feeling fear in the locker room due to my gendered body. Again, frequently the experience of a transgender person. In fact, my privilege allows me to hope some hot guy in the locker room notices my efforts to get in shape with my normative body. After spin, I head out to Kaiser. I have a doctor's appointment. I have to pee when I get to, man when I get to manage care hell, so I look for the male bathroom and have no thought or worry about being harassed, physically abused, or being arrested due to my gender. I can pee in peace. When I check in at the desk at Kaiser, no stress as a cisgender person about being denied medical services due to the staff stating that gender marker on my Kaiser ID card does not match my gender identity. As a cisgender person, I also take for granted that I have health insurance through my job, and I know I won't be fired due to my gender identity or expression. I also presuppose that I don't need a psychological evaluation to get medical care. Next, I fill out the health questionnaire in the waiting lobby. The form asks me to fill out what my gender is. There's just two options, male or female. I pick male. I also realize that the doctor will write some notes about me as his patient, perhaps a diagnosis he'll make, but I guarantee that he won't diagnose me gender identity disorder. When the doctor finally enters the exam room after I don't know how long I've been waiting, I tell him that I'm feeling a bit under the weather. I am 100% certain that he will not say that my condition is a result of my gender. I also don't have to worry if I disrobe. I won't be judged or, st or stared at by my doctor with an othering look due to my gender presentation. Okay, cool. Clean belt, uh, bill of health. Now off to Woodland to facilitate a supervision group of the therapists getting hours for their license. They consult with me about their work with clients. There is an assumption that all their clients are cisgender. Transgender persons are made invisible. The conversation is informed by tons of binaries, healthy, unhealthy, functional, dysfunctional, male, female, just to name a few. And these binaries police people and don't account for the richness and diversity of lived experience. I get back in my car to head back to Sacramento. The beat of the binary in my head is louder than the music of Madonna playing in my car. 
On the way to the Gender Health Center, I get in a car accident. True story. Fender bender. Shit. Now I'm running late for a group supervision. What about car insurance information? But I know for sure that if the police show up and ask for my driver's license, I won't be insulted or glared at by the officer due to my name or sex not matching the sex they believe to be based on my gender expression. Again, often the case with transgender folks. After supervision group at the Gender Health Center, I head out to teach at Sac State. Tonight I discuss and lecture on transgender issues and the harsh realities that many face, such as job discrimination, threats of violence, hate crimes, health discrepancies, as just a few. My students are moved and enlightened by the discussion and praise me for being so open-minded and progressive. And I know that as soon as the class is over, I really don't have to think about these harsh realities anymore because I am cisgender. They don't affect my life. As I walk to the car, I also know that I won't be hassled or assaulted due to my gender expression. Class is over. It's 9 p.m., long day, tired, I need a beer. So I go to my local watering hole, Nishiki. I blend in, not worried about being teased due to my gender uh, expression. Well, maybe just a little bit because I'm carrying a man purse. <laughs> <laughs> I blend in by, by talking about sports, being fully accepted in the man club, a club that is very exclusionary through homophobic, sexist, and transphobic othering. Half a beer later and a sake bomb later, I notice an attractive person sitting at the end of the bar somebody I haven't seen before. I go over to that person with the intention of flirting. I'm anxious a bit. Will I get rejected? Will I get the person's phone number? But I'm not afraid or worried that my biological status will be the cause for my rejection. I also know that the person will not ask me what my genitals look like or how I have sex. All too common for transgender persons. So such is a typical day for me benefiting from unearned privilege, in this case, cisgender privilege. Unmerited benefits afforded to me solely due to the fact that I am not transgender. So why is it important for us as allies and non-trans folks to look brutally honest and examine our privilege? Without interrogating cis normativity and using our privilege to fight injustice, the privilege uses us. And when privilege is used to its own advantages, it cuts us off from kindness, tolerance, love, and our commitment to social justice as we take our cisgender identity for granted. <clears throat> then when we're separated off from our preferred values, cisgender privilege teams up with hate, intolerance, and yes, it creates the context for violence and murder of transgender and gender nonconforming persons. So we must look at our privilege and other privileges white privilege, male privilege, class privilege for a few examples. If we are going to strive towards a just world, in fact, it would be just and queer to envision this utopian world, or what I call queertopia. <laughs> so here's my version, this is my version of a queertopian world. Well, we would, as Michel Foucault says, make the familiar strange. All sex would be good sex, as long as it's consensual, from kink to even vanilla sex, free of restraints of morals, religion, psychiatry, the law. People would not feel guilty or judged or arrested to get their freak on because there would be no concept of a freak. People's directionality of their sexual desire would be more fluid. Relational choices would not be based on the gender of the person or the plumbing downstairs. Rather, the qualities of the person would be the main criteria for a relationship partner choice. Imagine that. Sounds like a pretty sane idea. There would be true marriage equality for all configurations and diversities of relationships, including poly and non-monogamous relationships. If this version of marriage equality does not happen, the marriage should be banned for all. All citizens, married or not, should gain the benefits that are afforded to only people in relationships or married people. There would be a loosening up of fixed sexual identity and gender identity categories, more room for flexibility. And if we have to have an identity acronym, I think we should inverse it. Q-I-T-B-L-G-A. 
If expecting, if one is pregnant and one is asked, it should not, should not be asked if it's a boy or a girl. But if somebody won't give up and continues to ask, one should say, I'm expecting a genderqueer kid. <laughs> I tried that in Nishiki, um, which kind of threw him off because he said I was expecting. I said I was expecting. <laughs> the comment, you throw like a girl, would be the ultimate compliment. There would be gender-free and gender-neutral bathrooms. This is one of my favorite. Required reading in schools starting with grade school through high school would include the works of Michelle Foucault, Judith Butler, and Kate Borstein, even in Catholic schools. <clears throat> Classes in feminist theory and queer theory would be general education requirements. U.S. history would have a whole, uh, had a, its own entire chapter on the Stonewall riots, the gay rights movement, transgender movements, along with the story of activist radical movements such as Queer Nation. The Socialist Party would have the majority of seats in the U.S. Senate. <laughs> Althea Garrison, a transgender African-American female, would be president of the U.S. She was the first transgender person out transgender person to be elected to a state house. Lady Gaga would be her vice president. <laughs> <laughs> I have a whole cabinet, but we got time sake. Dr. Mazel worked in the Surgeon General though. <clears throat> the Iron Curtain of Capitalism would be torn down. The violence of racism, sexism, and ableism would be squashed. Gender identity would no longer exist. In fact, the whole damn DSM would be banned. The psychiatric diagnosis manual that pathologizes difference and medicalizes social and political problems. Evidence-based mental health practice would be no longer. Narrative therapy would be privileged. Free access to health care for much needed services. Hormone surgery would be a right. People would not have to justify who they love and how they pref prefer to perform their gender. People would not be harassed, discriminated, or murdered. Yes, not murdered due to their gender expression and their identity. Just because of who you are and having the courage to do so should not end in death. Ultimately, there would be no need for a transgender day of remembrance. Now, this queer utopia may seem like a fantasy. But imagining this future is not what could be, but what should be. Cisgender folks, all of us, join me, join us in this striving for creating and cultivating this queer world. Thanks.